Hi, welcome back. It's Bridge Church Online, and it's time for Bridge Kids. So let's go. Every day, I will wear the full armor of God. I put on the belt of truth so I can fight the devil's lies. I put on the armor of godliness to protect my heart and do what's right. I put on the good news boots so I'll be ready to show God's love all day. I hold up the shield of faith to block anything the enemy sends my way. I put on the helmet of salvation so I'll remember God will always love me. I use the sword of the Spirit because God's word is my best weapon against the enemy. Now I stand firm and pray. Hey Bridge Kids! Welcome back to our series, Everyday Armor. My name is Pastor Julie, and this is Pastor Chris. Hey everybody, we were talking last week about how cities are amazing. Even our own city, Virginia Beach, right? Definitely. We got everything here. They got every store you could ask for. We got the beach, we got entertainment, we got skate parks, we got dog parks. Oh, that's right. And one of my favorite things to do in the city is go to the zoo. I just love the giraffes. They're my favorite. But God made so many amazing animals. And hey, that's the name of our game for today. It's called Amazing Animals. Okay, Bridge Kids, in this game, you will see some crazy facts about amazing animals. But you have to decide if those facts are true or false. If you think it's true, give it a big thumbs up. And if you think it's false, give it a big thumbs down. Are you ready to play? Here we go. Great job, Bridge Kids. What a cool game. I learned some amazing things about all the animals God has made. Okay, I bet you guys know what's next. In our series, Everyday Armor, we have been talking about putting on the armor of God. And all throughout the Bible, we see people using worship as a weapon against the enemy. That's because when we worship God, we are saying that He is more powerful than anyone or anything that might try to harm us. So let's all stand on our feet and worship God together.
Great job, Bridge Kids. Now you know what's next. It's time for us to spend a few seconds with Jesus. So everybody just take a minute, settle down, close your eyes, bow your heads, quiet your hearts. God, thank you that you are above all things, that you are worthy of praise, that you are a good God, and that you provide for all our needs. Lord, we just say we trust you, and we just give you this week. We just thank you for every good thing. We lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen. Great job, Bridge Kids. Okay, in our Everyday Armor series, we have been talking all about our amazing city. I just love our city, not only because it has the beach and a downtown, but because of all the amazing people that live in our city. God made so many incredible different kinds of people. Oh, there are people who like rap music and people who like opera, people who like steak and people who like sushi. I just love meeting all the different kinds of people that God made. There are so many. And you know who's the best at bringing them to you? so that you can understand the range of people that are out there is award-winning reporter, Joe Miller. I love watching her coverage. She's awesome. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't you know it? Her show's about to come on right now. Great timing. Let's watch. Yeah. everyone, it's Joe on the go and I'm Joe Miller coming to you live each and every day as I take to the streets to give you all the deets. Today is going to be shredded. We're going to catch up with professional skateboarder Carter Collins. How cool is that? Check out what we're all about today. Carter? What's up, Joe? I'm so stoked to see you. Oh, those tricks were killer. Oh, yeah? You saw that triple set trick with an ollie slide? Um, I think so. <laughs> Whatever it's called, those moves are so crazy. Did it take you forever and a day to learn how to do all of that? I was born to shred, but definitely spent a lot of time learning the tricks of the trade. And I bet everyone thinks you are so cool. In fact, I have done some research. As a reporter does. Well, and I found out that you have at least 50 different protégés. For the people on the other side of the camera, explain what that means. Sure. Well, a, a protégé is just a fancy word for people who think that what you do is rad and they want to learn from you. That's beyond cool that so many people are wanting to follow your lead. How did that even happen? I've been skating for a long time, and I started hanging out with some other dudes that love to skate too. I was chilling with them, and then I started to notice that they were doing and saying some things that were the opposite of cool. Oh, really? Explain for us what was going down. Yeah, so, so here's an example. I was doing a tray flip down a three stair, right? And when I was done, I noticed some of the guys were over there by the quarter pipe saying some straight up bad words. Ooh, that is not good. What'd you do about that scene? It got pretty gnarly. The newer guys started following along. It started with bad words and stuff and eventually got way worse. 
They were excluding others and messing with different skaters' equipment. Tons of stuff that God wouldn't be cool with. Negative influence all over the place. Sounds like that was not top tier. You're right, and I had a choice to make. I could take my board and bail, or I could join in and act like they do. I could either fit in, or I could take a stand for what was right. It can be so hard to stand up and do the right thing. I've actually been reporting about the armor of God lately, and Carter, this whole sitch sounds like a perfect opportunity to put on the armor of godliness. That's the piece that protects our hearts from wanting to do the wrong thing while helping us have the power to do the right thing. I'm sure everyone is dying to know, what did you end up doing? It was hard to take a stand against those guys. I mean, they were pretty cool, and I wanted them to like me, and I wanted them to skate with me. But I remembered that the devil uses other people that can be bad influences to turn our hearts away from God. Because I wanted to do what God says is right, I put on the armor of godliness and took a stand against the devil. I talked to those dudes, and you know what? It ended up being cooler than a 1080 flip. They realized that what they were doing was wrong, and they changed their ways. So by taking a stand and doing what was right, they saw how they should act out here at the park. And now they follow your lead. Awesome! Hey Carter, thanks for hanging with us today and showing us exactly what the Armor of Godliness looks like in action. Totally. Well, that's it for us today. Join us next time for Joe on the Go. I can't wait to see who we will meet next. Man, that was amazing. I love finding out what makes this city so special because of all the people who do all kinds of different things. And who better to bring it to us than Joe and Carter? Man, I wish I could do some of those skateboarding tricks, though. I gotta tell you. I know. Terrible. Those were pretty awesome. Anyway, let's talk about some of the things that Joe and Carter were talking about. Definitely. They told us some amazing stories today. We are gonna review by asking some questions. So I'm gonna ask a question, and if you think you know the answer, shout it out. My first question is about the piece of God's armor that Carter just told us about. Who remembers what it's called? That's right! Carter told us about the armor of godliness. Now, what did he say that piece of armor helped him to do? Yes! We now know that the armor of godliness helps us to do the right thing even when it's tough. Carter told us about how he was surrounded by people who were saying and doing the wrong things but he didn't let that keep going because Carter knows what God says is right. Okay, last question. Where do we learn what God says is right? You got it. The Bible tells us what's right and what's wrong. And the armor of godliness helps our hearts want to do the right thing. It also gives us the power to say no to doing the wrong thing. We wear the armor over our hearts because the Bible tells us that we must protect it above all else. When we put on the armor of godliness, we're protecting our hearts and that will help us to know how to do what's right. Each piece of God's armor is completely invisible, but that doesn't mean it's not real. Even though we can't see it, when we put on God's armor every single day, it makes us strong and gives us God's power. Hey, that reminds me of something. Julie, I got a symbol. Oh, awesome. I got a symbol to help you remember each piece of God's armor and what it's for. Let's see it. All right, how many pieces of armor do you see? Let's see, uh, just, yeah. All right, that's right, six. Okay, the first piece of armor that God has given us is the belt of truth. Then there's the armor of godliness and the good news proves. We need the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit too. When we put on the full armor of God, we're able to stand strong against any evil that comes our way. There are gonna be many times each day when we're tempted to do the wrong thing, but when we put on the armor of godliness, we'll have the power to make the right choice. And that's what we're learning today. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Okay, that's what we need to know today. Okay, I'm ready. It's kind of another simple. Ready? All right, so repeat after me. Okay. Okay. Put on. Put on. The armor of godliness. The armor of godliness. Very good, let's do it again. Okay. All right, put on. Put on. The armor of godliness. The armor of godliness. Good job. Awesome. When we put on the armor of godliness, it can help us choose the right thing. We know that isn't always easy to do. 
Now, you may be wondering, what does it look like to put on the armor of godliness in everyday life? Well, I have an example of someone who has. Let's take a look at Josh. Josh is a kid just like you. Josh tries his best to do the right thing every day. Earlier this week, one of Josh's friends asked to see the answers on his paper. Josh knew that it wasn't right to let his friend cheat off of the paper. So Josh put on the armor of godliness and told his friend to try her best instead of cheating. When you put on the armor of godliness, you'll be able to choose what God says is right. When we put his full armor on, the enemy doesn't stand a chance. Wow, Josh did a great job. And I know you guys can too. So this week, I want you guys to remember to spend some time with God every day so that you can put on the armor of godliness too. Until next time, bye Bridge Kids. Bye. See you next time. Thank you, Bridge Kids. And thank you, Bridge Church, for your continued financial support. Your giving helps the community around us. Okay, take your phones out and type the words, give now to the number 94,000. See, it's on the bottom of your screen. Okay, before we get into worship, I want to encourage you to interact with us. You can like, share, and comment in the section below. If you have a prayer request, type the words, please pray to the number 94,000 or type please pray in the comment section below. Okay, I am so excited to hear the word today. I, I need to hear a special word today. So come on, join me. Come on, we just lift up the name of Jesus in this place. He is the eternal King, the provider, the sustainer. Oh, we too. 
focus on him this morning and his goodness. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Yes, you're great, God. My God, how great you are.
working in this place. I worship you. I worship you.
Lift your voices and say, Waymaker. Yes, you are Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. God, you're my Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Come on, I just want you to just lift your hands and just wherever you are right now, just begin to worship the Lord. We've created an atmosphere for the presence of God to come and to move into our situation and circumstances. So I want you to just help me just to declare the name of the Lord. Would you do that with me right now? Father, we bless you in this place. Lord, there is none like you, God. You're great and greatly to be praised. You're our Father. Lord, you're a loving Savior. We bless you today. We exalt you. Lord, there is none like you. And Lord, just as the psalmist said, he said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. So Lord, that's what we've come to do. We've come to bless your name. We've come to exalt you. We've come to magnify you. We've come to lift you up. We've come to make you great. Lord, your name be great in all the earth. Your name be great in among the nations. Lord, let the people of the earth begin to declare your goodness and your mercy and your grace. So Lord, we just declare that today. Lord, that you are the Savior. Lord, you're the Savior of the world. You're our Redeemer. Lord, you're our rock, our fortress, our strong tower, our deliverer. Lord, you're our provider today. Lord, you're our source today. You're our strength today. Lord, you're our hope today. Lord, we bless you. You're our joy today. Lord, you created us. Lord, you great things in us. Lord, you have dreams for us. So, Father, we just declare the greatness of God. Lord, we declare the goodness of God. There is none beside you. We worship you. We bless your name. Lord, you're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all glory. You're worthy of all honor. So, God, we exalt you. We bless you. Come on, just right there, where you are, just begin to declare the goodness of God. Come on, and declare. Just begin to declare. Declare. That's who he is today. Come on, nothing else. Set your mind on things above. Set your attention on the things of God today. Oh, you are good, God. That is who you are. You're a way maker. You're a promise keeper. Oh, we bless you today. We bless you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. All there is done like you, God. I want you to do this with me. I just want you to spend just a moment with me as we just pray together. I want you to, to pray. We're going to pray for our nation. We're going to pray for needs. There's a friend of Pastor Archie's and mine, a minister in Alabama. His wife found him. He was, had died in the bed over the weekend. He's a pastor, and so he's 52 years old. So we want to pray for the Scott family today. We just ask that God would move in that situation. But whatever your need may be today, I just believe God supernaturally can speak to that need in that moment right now. Would you agree in prayer with me, God? I just declare the goodness of God right now over every situation. God, I speak peace and healing and comfort right now to the Scott family. Lord, I just pray that you would just minister to them, Lord, to that church that has just lost their pastor unexpectedly. God, I just ask that you would move by your spirit right now. And Lord, that your comforting angels would minister to them, Lord. I pray that you would strengthen them, Lord. I pray that you would encourage them. Lord, I just pray that you would be uh, their source of strength right now, Lord. I pray for his wife. I pray that you would minister to her right now in Jesus' name. God, we just declare that your goodness and your favor over our nation today. God, I just declare your greatness, Lord, that you're moving, Lord, that you're bringing about reconciliation, Lord, that you're bringing about unity, Lord, that you're bringing about and restoring hope to, Lord, of people that are hopeless, God. And I just thank you right now that you're moving in the hearts and lives of people all over our nation today. God, I just ask that you do a supernatural work. God, I just begin to call for a supernatural revival. Lord, I just begin to call people into your churches, God. I pray souls come in. Lord, we pray for souls today. God, we just call in souls today. Come on, call out someone in your family that needs salvation today. God, we just call them out to you today. God, we call on the name. Lord, we we call them out, Lord. We call them out. We call them out, Lord. A great revival, a great awakening, salvation, 
salvation to those who are lost, salvation to those that do not know you, God. So do we just declare that today? Lord, they're coming in. They're coming in. The work of the cross is strong enough to bring them in. Lord, your blood being shed is strong enough to bring them in. It's greater than their wickedness. It's greater than their sin. So, God, we just declare that over this nation today. Lord, we declare that over your people today. Lord, there's an awakening taking place in your church. God, I declare that there is an awakening. Lord, there's a spiritual hunger and thirst that's being birthed within your church like never before, God. And they're desiring the things of you like never before. So, God, we declare that. Lord, we decree that. We set it forth in the motion. Lord, across this nation. Father, do it, we pray. We declare that today, Jesus. I pray you minister to every heart. Lord, I pray you minister to those that may be sick in their body. God, I pray you bring about a supernatural work right now in Jesus' name. Supernatural work. Those that may be struggling financially, those that may be going through marital struggles, God, I pray that you would just speak peace and unity and harmony right now in Jesus' name. We declare these things. We declare these things. We declare these things in the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, because we serve a mighty, 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 mighty God. Come on, just give him a hand clap of praise right where you are. Just begin to celebrate him. Begin to celebrate what he's doing in your marriage. Begin to celebrate what he's doing at your work. Begin to celebrate what he's doing in our nation. Begin to celebrate what he's doing around the world. Come on, this is the time for us to rejoice. It's a time for us to see the work of the Lord like never before. His hand is moving. He is not disabled, but he's a mighty God. Whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance, God is more than able to sustain you and keep you and bring about the miracle that you need today. Oh, we bless you in this place. We bless you in this place. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. It's great, great to be in His presence. It's great to be here with you in this place of worship today. Why don't you turn and just kind of air high five somebody, wave at them, tell them it's great to see them, and you can be seated. fam thank you for joining us today this message I just believe is going to be an encouragement to you Tangie and I are praying for you we just be, we're believing for God's best in your life if you have a prayer request and you need someone to pray for you you have a need you can just text these words please pray to the number 94,000 
We'll get that. Myself, along with the entire staff of Bridge Church, will be praying over those needs this week. We love you. We just believe that God's going to move in your life, even during these difficult times and moments in our lives. God is moving. Today we're going to continue our series called Discover Joy. And Nehemiah 8.10, it says this, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Today's message is this right here. Discovering joy in difficulties. Discovering joy in difficulties. And that's found in James chapter 1, 2 through 4. You know, when you begin to think about the life of a Christian and what sets a Christian apart in the world, what is the mark that makes us different in a sad and a and depressed world? I believe it's this right here. It is joy. It's the ability to have joy in difficulties. It's, abil- it's the ability to continue to move forward with joy and a great sense of excitement, a great sense of encouragement, a great sense of anticipating what God's going to do in our lives. You know, when you think about the book of James, James, there are many people named James in the New Testament, but this James was the half-brother of Jesus. That's right. He was the half-brother of Jesus. In fact, in James chapter 1, in the first verse, he says he's a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning that James had a realization that Jesus was not just his half-brother, but he was the Son of God, and he was willing to give his life for the cause of his brother, Jesus, because of who Jesus was in the world and who God sent to the earth to be his salvation and our salvation. So throughout history, James has been given some nicknames. The first one is is callous knees. Uh, Historians tell us that James prayed so much that he developed calluses on both of his knees, and those calluses look like camel's knees. He's also been called James the Just because he talks about practical righteousness all throughout the book that bears his name. And when you begin to look at this book, it's been given the title of this right here. He's been given the title and called the Epistle of Applied Christianity because James begins to teach us how to apply the Word of God to our lives on a daily basis. It's not what you know, it's what you apply to your life that changes your life. In fact, in James chapter 1, verse 22, James says this, He says, do not merely hear the word, do it. Because the person who just hears the word and doesn't do it deceives himself. It's not enough just to read the Bible. I have to apply the Bible to my daily life. So in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, it says this, My fellow believers, when it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties, See it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the great joy that you can. The greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up the power within you to endure all things. And then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. How many of you know God wants our lives complete? He wants nothing missing in our life. He wants nothing incomplete in our lives. He wants our lives to be a picture of the perfection of His grace in our lives. Now, we live in a world that's facing many difficulties. There are many difficult situations that people are experiencing related to COVID-19, the loss of jobs, There are mothers and there are dads trying to figure out how they're going to teach their kids, educate their kids, because school is virtual for some time now. And so this brings a lot of strain. It brings a lot of difficulties. 
Can I say this to you? No one is exempt from experiencing difficult circumstances in life. There's no one in the world that is exempt from difficult situations and circumstances. In fact, Jesus said this, in this world you will have trouble. The prophetic words that come off the lips of Jesus ring true to us today that we live in a world that is saturated with trouble. But just because the world is saturated with trouble doesn't mean the trouble has to get on the inside of us. We can live victorious. We can live a life full of joy. Even when there's outward pressure, there can be the inward reality of God's presence, His joy, His Spirit living in our lives. In actuality, a lot of these difficult situations become an a doorway for opportunities. God uses difficult situations for His glory in our lives. Our difficulty can become a doorway to a miracle. For instance, Moses standing outside the Red Sea, the Red Sea in front of him, the Egyptians behind him, mountains on the left and on the right. He is sitting right there in the middle of a difficult situation, an impossible situation, and God gives him an opportunity to see a miracle. He says, Moses, raise up the rod that's in your hand. He raises it up, and the Red Sea parts, and the children of Israel march across on dry ground, and the the Egyptians are destroyed in the Red Sea. What happened? In the middle of that difficult situation and circumstance, God performed a miracle. Can I tell you right now, you need to look for the miracle in your difficulty. You need to look for the miracle in your negative situation. You need to look for the miracle in your mess. I'm going to say that one more time. You need to look for the miracle in your mess. Some of you are sitting at home. Some of you are watching on an iPhone or some other smart device in your vehicle. Some of you are sitting in a park. Some of you are at work. You're watching this. I'm telling you today, you need to find the miracle in your mess. God is with you. Everything's going to be okay. Look here. James tells us that we can have joy in the middle of craziness. You think about that. Your difficulties, number one, are an opportunity to experience the greatest joy. I'm going to say that one more time. Difficulties are an opportunity to experience the greatest joy. I like what the New American Standard Bible says with verse 2 of chapter 1 of James. He says, consider it all joy. Another translation says, consider it a pure joy brothers. Think about that. James is saying your difficulties can be an opportunity for your greatest joy. If you will consider it, it, consider it a joy. Consider it a pure joy when you enter into various trials and difficulties. Trials come in all shapes and sizes and forms. Trials can come in the morning, they can come at noon, they can come at night or at midnight. Trials come our way. In fact, you're either going into trouble, in trouble, or coming out of trouble, but there's this one thing you can do and I can do. We can consider it all joy. We can see the greatest joy in our trial because on the other side of that trial, there's a new day. There's a bright morning. There's something that God is trying to do in our lives. Now, when you begin to look at joy, Jesus was a prime example of someone facing difficulties and seeing joy in those difficulties. You think about that. Jesus had to face the cross. He knew he was going to die. 
He knew he was going to be brutally beaten, nailed to the cross, hung there to die. He knew he would be buried in a borrowed grave. And yet, he did it with joy. That's right. He did it with joy. In fact, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 through 4 says this, Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Meaning, the Hebrew writer says, you got to change your focus. You can't look at what's going on around you and be filled with joy. you got to fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before Him, look here, for the joy set before Him, He endured the cross. How are you going to endure your circumstances, your difficulties, your trials? You're going to have to see it as a joy. You're going to have to see it through the eternal eyes of God. He said, scorning its shame, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners. Meaning, look at Jesus as an example that we can take to use joy in the middle of difficult situations. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Don't lose heart. Choose joy. Don't lose heart. Choose joy. Don't grow weary. Choose joy. In your struggle against sin, so you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. In the middle of adverse situations and circumstances, Jesus understood the importance of joy and that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Verse 2 of chapter 1 of James says, My fellow believers, when it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties. How many of you feel that way? Just raise your hand where you're at. You say, yeah, it feels like I've been facing nothing but difficulty. Children working from home, my wife and I working from home, and we're trying to work out our relationship while doing our work for someone else. And we're facing difficulties. We don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. We don't know what the future is going to hold. We're in the middle of a political season. We don't know who to vote for. That's when you choose joy. That's when you pray. That's when you press into God. He says, my fellow believers, when it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable, see it as an invaluable opportunity. Come on, opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. The greatest joy that you can. You say, what is joy? Is it a feeling or is it an emotion? Is it a choice? All of the above. I like what John Piper says about joy. He, he defines it this way. He says, Christian joy is a good feeling in the soul. Anybody like feeling good way down deep in your soul? He says, it's a joy, Christian joy is a good feeling deep down in your soul produced by the Holy Spirit which causes us to see the beauty of Christ in the Word and in the world. It is a good feeling deep down in your soul produced by the Holy Spirit, which gives us, which gives us the ability to see Christ, the beauty of Christ in the Word and in the world. Think about that. Difficulties give us the ability to experience the greatest joy. Number two, difficulties are an it, difficulties are an opportunity for our faith to be tested. I, I know we don't like tests. I didn't like tests growing up when I, when I was in school, high school, college. I didn't like tests. I didn't like pop quizzes or pop tests because, you know, tests really show you what you're deficient in. A test reveals not so much what you know, it reveals what you do not know and what you lack. So difficulties are an opportunity for our faith to be tested. That's right. Our faith must be tested to see if it's true faith 
genuine faith, good faith, strong faith. Someone once said, a faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Trials or difficulties are not designed to destroy our faith, but they're, they're designed to refine and to reveal our faith. I'm going to say that one more time. Trials are not designed to destroy our faith, but to refine and reveal our faith. So don't get mad at the test. Don't run from the test. These tests begin to prove what kind of faith you have. In Mark chapter 4, the disciples, their faith went through a test. Jesus got in the boat and he said, let's go to the other side. And so they get in the boat and they begin to go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee and a storm suddenly arose on the Sea of Galilee. The wind began to blow. The waves began to beat on the bow of the boat and against the sides of the boat, and it seems like the disciples are going to be overwhelmed by the storm, and they, get, they are fearful of what's going on, and guess what? They began to look for Jesus, and Jesus was asleep in the bow of the boat. They wake him up. Can I tell you today, Jesus doesn't jump out of your boat when the storm comes. Jesus is in the boat with you. We're all in the same boat together today. But guess what? Jesus is in our boat and we can stand the test of faith because he's there. You don't have to grow weary. You don't have to become anxious because Jesus is in the boat. But look what the disciples said. They said, Master, don't you care if we perish or if we die? Jesus tells the wind to be still. And guess what? The wind stopped blowing. The waves stopped roaring. And he looks at his disciples and he says this, Do you not have faith? That storm came to test their faith and they discovered the deficiency they had or the lack of trust they had in their father, God. Can I tell you today, you have a good, good father, and you can trust him. He's with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Also, number three, difficulties are an opportunity for the power of God to be revealed. I'm going to say that one more time. Difficulties are an opportunity for the power of God to be revealed. The power of God. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas were flogged. They were beaten, badly beaten. And they were thrown in the inner cell of a prison. They could have murmured. They could have complained. But I believe Paul and Silas saw their difficulty as an opportunity for the power of God to be revealed in their lives. And they began to sing, and they began to praise God, and they began to pray. And the Word of God, Scripture says, about midnight, an earthquake came and it shook the prison that they were in. So much so that the door to the cell that they were held prison in opened. And supernaturally, they were freed from prison because they chose to worship God, to praise and to pray in a difficult situation. And they understood that God wasn't distant, but God was with them. And the power of God was revealed in the middle of their difficulty. I want you to look at verse 3 with me. It says this, it says, For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure. It stirs up power within you to endure all things. Some of you feel like you're about to break. You feel like you have been bent. You feel like you have been stretched and you're about to crack. 
You're about to break under the pressure of the world. You're about to break under the pressure of anxiety and difficulties. But I can assure you, in the middle of that difficulty, God wants you uh, to experience His power. He wants to reveal His power to your life in a way that you've never seen before. If you will begin to lift up your voice and praise God and understand that in the middle of adverse circumstances and difficulties, I can experience the greatest joy because joy is independent of my circumstances. It is dependent upon a spirit filled life and the Holy Spirit that brings joy to you is on the inside of you it's righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Spirit the kingdom of God is within you Ephesians 3.20 it says it this way now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask or think according, look here, according to the power of God that works in you. If there's no power of God working in you, there'll be no power of God revealed on the outside of you. I'm going to say that one more time. If there's no power of God working in you, if there's no power of God that will take you up out of your circumstances, there will be no power of God working on the outside of you. He says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask or think, according to what? According to the power of God working in you. It's an inside job. Salvation is an inside job. God works in you before he works on the outside of you. These difficult situations are great opportunities to see the power of God revealed in your life. To see the power of God revealed in your children, in your husband, in your wife, in your neighborhood, in your community, in your city, in your state, in our nation, and around the world. It's time for the church to arise and become what God's called us to become. And Jesus said in Matthew that, that he would build his church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Loved one, Christian, it's not a time for you to be locked in your home, scared, afflicted, full of anxiety, and fear. It's a time to consider it a pure joy and rise up in the power of God and say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We all go through difficult situations. Don't you take on that Charlie Brown syndrome why is everybody picking on me? We all go through trouble. We all go through difficulties. We all go through valleys. But Jesus is with us. Last but not least, difficulties are an opportunity to develop endurance. It's an opportunity to develop endurance. Meaning, it's an opportunity to shake off that quitting spirit. Winners never quit, and quitters never win. It's an opportunity to endure to the end. It's an opportunity to say, I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up on God. I'm not giving up on church. I'm not giving up on my small group. That's right. You need to join a small group. You need people around you during difficult times. How many of you know we encourage each other? Small groups are opening today at Bridge Church. They're going to be Zoom groups. They're going to be in-person groups. You can sign up at bridgechurch.tv. Get connected in a group. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as such are doing. So much so as you see the end approaching. The Hebrew writer was saying, when you see things getting tough and you see the end of the age drawing near, it's not a time to isolate yourself and stop going to church and stop connecting. You need to connect more during those times. So difficulties are an opportunity to develop endurance. Now I'm fascinated by nature. I like watching animals and like watching birds and, and nature. It amazes me how, how God designed nature and how God 
created every living thing. I love watching butterflies fly in the spring. But when you look at that butterfly flying in the air, and you look at that butterfly landing on flowers, he looks so effortless. Looks like he's just floating through the air. Doesn't look like he's got a care in the world. But what you don't see about that butterfly was the struggle that it went through to become a beautiful butterfly. Before he was a butterfly, or she was a butterfly, it was a caterpillar. And that caterpillar spun a silk cocoon. And in that cocoon, a metamorphosis took place. And when that metamorphosis was complete, a butterfly began to break out of that cocoon. I believe right now some people are breaking out of a cocoon. You're breaking out of restriction. You're breaking out of the thing that's holding you back. But the thing about that cocoon is this right here. If somebody were to come by and see the struggle of the butterfly breaking out of the cocoon and try to help it break free, it would be doing it harm and danger and eventually kill the butterfly. Why? Because it's the struggle that makes the butterfly beautiful. It's the difficulty that makes the butterfly beautiful. What am I saying? When a butterfly begins to get out of its cocoon, all the fluid in its body, its body's a lot larger than its wings at this moment, all the fluid in its body is released into its wings as it struggles to escape the cocoon. I'm telling you this, if you want to fly like a butterfly, you got to recognize there might be some struggle and difficulty in life. But what the struggle is not meant to destroy you. The struggle is meant to complete you. I'm going to say that one more time. It's not meant to destroy you. The difficulty is not meant to destroy you. It's meant to make you complete, perfect, lacking nothing. Look what he says in verse 4. And then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection in every part of your being until there's nothing missing and nothing lacking. Think about that. God wants you complete. He wants you whole. He wants you mature. So He allows your faith to be tested so that endurance is built up in your life so that you can become everything He's designed for you to become. Jesus said, in this world you'll have trouble. But He went on to say this, cheer up. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. What Jesus was saying was this right here. If I've overcome the world, and if I live in you, you're going to overcome the world because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because when having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. When he has stood the test. He stood the test. When I think of Jesus, I'm so glad he stood the test. Like Jesus, joy gives us the ability to face difficulties. Like Jesus, joy gives us the ability to face difficulties. Jesus faced the cross. He endured the cross. 
And guess what? Because He endured the cross, our salvation is complete. We call it the finished work of Christ. He didn't half do the job. He got her all done. He finished it. In fact, while hanging on the cross, He says, it is finished. Jesus endured the cross with great joy. I want to encourage you today. Tap into the joy of the Lord because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that joy comes from Jesus. The indwelling presence of Jesus. God with us today is the Holy Spirit. And one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is this right here. Joy. King David said this, that he experienced, Psalm 32, the joy of sins forgiven. Maybe you don't know Christ today. Maybe you're sitting at home. You're in a vehicle. You're at work. You're at a park. Sitting on the beach today. You say, Pastor, I want to experience the joy of sins forgiven. I know I'm separated from God. How do I do that? Well, you repent. You come to a realization that I'm living my own life and I need to repent. I need to change my mind and live my life for Christ. You repent. You turn from your way and you turn to God's way. That's you today. You say, Pastor, I want to do that. I'm going to pray with you here in a second. But if you want to give your life to Christ, I want you to text these words, I am saved to the number 94,000. I am saved to the number 94,000. Can I pray with you today? If you want to give your life to Christ, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Dear God, I'm a sinner. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die in my place. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. I turn from my old way and I turn to Him for salvation. Therefore, I am saved. I'm a new creation in Christ. You said those words today. I just believe God saved you. That you've just began a relationship with Jesus Christ. Again, text these words, I am saved, to the number 94,000. And we'll send you an email with information that will help you on your way, on your journey of salvation. I want to pray for all the believers that have joined us today. I just want to pray that God would strengthen you, that joy would overcome you right now. Lord, I just pray for everyone that is connecting with us today having church today. I pray that the grace of God and the joy of the Holy Spirit would come upon them. God, that they would reframe their difficulties and see them through eternal an eternal perspective that you're doing a work in them. That you're completing the work that you began in them. So right now, I pray that grace would overshadow them. That you would be with them that you would encourage them in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us today. TNG and I love you so much. We miss you. We just believe God's with you. I just believe the tide is turning against COVID-19. God's going to do a supernatural work. I just believe this is a day of greatness, a day of fullness a day of joy David said I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord every Sunday we receive our tithe and offering here at Bridge Church I want to thank you so much for your faithful giving to the ministry of Bridge Church as we continue to help here locally with people that have needs food different types of payments during a job loss 
all our partners here locally and around the world that we help, strategic partners, your giving makes all that possible. Even during these down times, guess what? We need to keep God first. We need to keep tithing, keep sowing, keep believing. You desire to give today. You want to honor God in your tithe. You want to worship God in your tithe. You can text the words, Give Now, to the number 94,000. Give Now, to the number 94,000. For all you young millennials, those who use Cash App, Gen Z, you can Cash App it to to the dollar sign Bridge Church VA. It's on your screen. We want to thank you for your faithful giving week in and week out. We just believe together as we partner together as a church family, we're changing the world. Changing the world one life at a time. Once again, thank you for joining us. Tanji and I are praying with you and believing for you along with our entire pastoral staff and prayer partners. We're believing for God's best in your life. Once again, thank you for joining us. Be careful, be safe, be blessed. In Jesus' name. Wow, what a powerful word today. I needed to hear that. Did you? We love to hear how this ministry has impacted you. You can text the words, please pray, to the number 94,000 with any praise reports or prayer requests that you might have. We have gotten some amazing testimonies and we want you, you, I'm talking to you, to keep it coming. So remember to text the words, please pray to the number 94,000. We also wanna know your next steps. So text the word card to the number 94,000. Remember, here at Bridge Church, we want to help any way that we can. So feel free to reach out anytime. Remember, be the bridge wherever you are, and we'll see you next week.